Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to demo the advanced data validation test scripts in Oracle. Now that the first eight videos walk you through writing many different types of data validation tests, the next step is to run them in an organized way. This advanced implementation shown in this video runs each test case and outputs to a table. What you see now is the table output. Notice the additional data points in the results versus the simple script shown in the prior video in the playlist. The prior video had status, test ID, test description, that's it in the basic script. The advanced script also tacks on execution time, how long each test case takes to run. It uh, tacks on the rejection details. These are all header rows because they pass, but if there was a failure, you'd have detail rows with a rejection code and a very detailed description of what failed and why. And then you have expected result, actual result when you have a failure, and you even have the lookup SQL for a failure. So you can just go highlight, copy the SQL out of here, paste it in your SQL editor, paste it, run it, and it will give you the data behind the test case fail. So this is a very robust advanced script that gives you everything you need to troubleshoot. You just set the script up, have it run daily, and then when it fails, you come in here and do the troubleshooting. First, a quick level set. Open up a browser and go to github.com slash data research labs in the URL. And once there, click on SQL scripts, scroll down till you see data validation scripts, click that. Scroll down and we're using Oracle, there's Oracle. And in Oracle, we want the advanced validation script. Click that. And we're gonna work through all the steps in here. Step one, two, three, four, we expand it and we're gonna work through it. So let's start off with step one, downloading and installing Oracle SQL Developer. If it's not already installed, just click on this link. I'll right click, open in a new window. And then go install, download and install, follow the instructions, the appropriate package for your platform, Windows 64-bit, 32-bit, Mac OS, whatever. Moving along to step number two, we wanna download and deploy the demo data so you can run the script against it. and in this GitHub uh, site, there's two different URLs. I guess I'll pop it open. The first one is gonna be to create all the table structures. So you would copy paste that out and execute it. And the, third, uh, the second one is to copy paste the script out and insert all of the test data. That'll get you set up so you can run the script. Next up, step three, we're gonna download and execute the advanced setup script, not to be confused with the test case script. Let's expand that and see what we have going on here. The advanced script, right click, open in a new tab. There's all the SQL, control A to highlight everything, control C to copy, and you go paste it in SQL editor and execute it. Now, what is it actually doing? Not much. You can highlight and run this if you need to. It's commented out to drop the two tables if you've already run it before. But this is a one-time thing. You one-time highlight and run this, and it's gonna create my target schemas, demo HR, and it's gonna create a test case results table with those fields. And then I also wanna add a test case config table, which has a property name, property value pair. So that's all this does, one time, set up two tables. Oracle doesn't have nice pound or pound pound global temp tables like SQL Server and others database platforms do. So the fastest way, especially for older versions of Oracle, was just to create a permanent table and treat it like a temp table. So that's what I'm doing here, one time. And in the script, we'll see later, we delete the contents out of here over and over every run. Anyway, that is how you download the script and then you basically just execute it. Next up, step four to download and configure the advanced test cases script. So let's right click the link here, open in a new tab. It's a big script, there's a lot going on. Actually, let's control A, control C to copy it. And the only configuration we have to do, scroll past all the header block here and get down to line 70, 71. That's where we're inserting into our test case config table, a name value pair. So the number of days to look back, 100. The max number of rows to return, if there's a failure, don't return 50,000 failed rows, just return five, a max of five. So these are two values that I reference over and over down below in the code so that I just have one place that I have to go to make changes. And that is how you configure the advanced script. Next up, step five. You really should review this in great detail and understand the advanced script. So let's go ahead and do that. 
The script currently consists of almost 3,600 lines of SQL, so that's three times bigger than the basic script, and is broken down into the following sections. Line 1 to 63, that's a comment block header. Line 64 to 75, that populates the configuration table. We looked at that in the previous section. Line 76 to 3,600, that's the 66 individual sample test validation cases, all the SQL selects and includes a lot of boilerplate code. We're going to look at that in a minute. Lines 36.13 to 36.37, they're used to calculate the test case execution time, a little block of code that applies it to everything that ran previously. And then the final block of code, lines 36.38 to 36.74, that's just to organize and post the test cases as a air quote report from the output table that it's been accumulating the results. I've zoomed in and now I want to walk through what a typical data validation test case, the SQL looks like in the advanced script. So I picked test case 31, same one I did in the basic script that's gonna look at carriage return line feeds in the last name field. So the yellow block here and the blue block are two different things. The yellow block is the unique SQL for the test case. The blue block, as this comment indicates, is all boilerplate code. So each data validation case has multiple SQL selects up here and they're written as a CTE, common table expression. So you have your width block and then CFG is configure. That's just gonna select the test case name and the test case description. It's just effectively hard coding them, but just in one spot, the same spot on all the test cases. And then comma dot, the data under test. This is the unique SQL for the test case. In this case, case when the last name has, you can barely see it, a, a car 10, the ASCII character 10, a line feed. If there's a line feed in the string, then stamp the rejection code, blah, 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 blah. Cast the location of that line feed as var car, tack that on. So you're gonna get the expected result, none, with a pipe delimiter, and then another pipe delimiter that says the actual. And I chose to do this because I can split. So I just have one field to store the rejection code uh, details and the expected value, pipe delimited, and the actual value, pipe delimited. And then at the report section, way at the bottom of the script, I split it apart. It was easier to do that because the case logic can have everything in one line, rather than try to have, get all tricky and repeat this logic three times, one for an as rejection, and a whole nother block of the same thing as expected, and a whole nother block as actual. No, we don't want to do that. So it's keep the logic here, and then have one string, and then split the screen string down at the bottom. So that's what's going on in this data under test section. And then the third section, eh, I just left it in here for consistency. It's not doing much. It's the BLL, the business logic layer. In some of the test cases, you'll see there's a bunch going on here. But here it doesn't. I'm just selecting star from dot. But I am saying, don't return all 50,000 rows. Return only the one or two that had a fail that, well, or a skip or a warn or whatever. Anything that's not all good, anything that fell through the case else right there to the all good, don't show me those. Show me anything that had a problem. So that's all this business logic layer is doing. But anyway, you'll walk through the 66 cases and see some that have a lot more going on there. And then we get to the blue section. That's all boilerplate. Just copy paste, don't change a thing. I wanted to mention this, insert into. So unlike the basic script, which is just selects, Every one of these test cases has like line 1673. It has an insert into the temp table results, all of our uh, with select statement. I'll leave it to you to read the GitHub, all the details on what the other sections in the uh, code do, especially in the blue boilerplate. It's an interesting read, I'm not gonna do it here. On to step six, executing the advanced script. Expand that. Uh, I'll go show this in a bit, but basically, you have your SQL script here. You highlight everything, control A, and you click the green triangle this time. And it's gonna run all the results. Let me click on this and go look at it. And it's nice, in your results, any fails sort to the top alphabetically by status first and then by test script number. The output is really beautifully laid out in this uh, grid format. And to watch the script run, here's the script in SQL Developer, control A to highlight everything hit this green button, not this one, and get the nice grid. And there we go, now we get the nice grid. And with the grid, you can see sort, scroll, export, expand, we can do whatever we wanna do. 
And finally, the next steps, how to build your own validation test scripts. We'll scroll through this. You really should expand on the step five above or expand it and go read through in detail all the notes. It's highly recommended. Uh, number two, I would suggest that you open up the advanced test case script in Notepad, put it over on your left monitor, and then open up SQL Developer, make a new blank script, and start going from there. And I would start off with a comment block. You can copy paste what our script has or do your own. And you're going to pick a schema, whatever your target schema or database is, it's under test, identify it, list it in your comment block, and then start with table one. Maybe it's alphabetical, it's first table. Maybe it's, you know, there's 50 tables and there's only five you want to have under test because those are the high priority five. Whatever, pick whatever table you want. When I write scripts, I don't have any of this stuff. That's all moved to the right. I have the table name and the field name and then details of what the test case is. I would recommend that you do table level test cases first for each table. So in our example, we've picked table number one. Then I would do one or two or three row count typically just one row count test case. And then I would do diff check test cases. And then I would do keys, foreign keys and unique keys. There's one or more test cases for that. So I would always do these first because there's not going to be many of them and they're table level. Heuristics is kind of a hybrid. It's a mix of table level and field level. So I would do those next. And then sets four through seven, your field specific test cases for date field types and numeric field types and text field types and using regular expressions. I bundle all those together and typically, like you saw in the best practices video, I will take and do a one big table scan pass with a lot of case else's in there addressing all the fields with all these different test case types. Definitely put the field level test cases after the table level. And at that point, scratch this, not quite right. At that point, I circle back and I do table number two and I do all the test cases. Circle back, table number three, table number four, table number five. After all the tables are laid out in the script, then I'll come and tack on the defects for regression testing as appropriate. Now, sometimes I put that in a giant script, five to 10,000 lines, and I run it. It takes 15, 20, 30 minutes, and it's a daily run. Other times, that's too too much, so I will break down each test script file for a given table. Or maybe I'll take five important tables, put them in a script, and then 10 or 15 or 20 less important files, put uh, tables, put them in their own script. And sometimes I take the defect regression tests and put them in their own script. And when you report on it and you have the descriptions named appropriately, it really flows nicely in the output report. And one final parting thought, uh, put on the finishing touches of your script. Don't forget to apply the best practice examples in the uh, test cases 62 to 66. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also, check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.